to It's Cisco Live EMEA. I'm here with Ali. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, great. I've had a fantastic 24 hours so far and really excited about what's going on today. It's cool, man. It's just, I, this is my second time in Amsterdam for yeah, Cisco same, Live. Same. Really? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And it's, it's a fun event. Like, no matter what, it's a fun event. Um, and one of the things I wanted to get into you into with you today, if I can talk yeah. this morning, I need more coffee, yeah, is worry. the whole point of the DevNet Zone. The reason, I mean, we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary, yeah, and the awesome. impetus for DevNet when it was first created was all about trying to help educate and enable yeah. people who are typically networking, network focused or hardware centric who don't usually think about we call them automation tools, but let's just be real, like developer, classically developer tools. Yeah, yeah. They just don't normally think about that, but there's so much that can be done with those types of tools to help simplify not just the day-to-day -day work, but solve complex problems in ways that we as network engineers never thought about. Nice. So I'd really love to hear from you, like yeah. not just like how did DevNet kind of affect you, but how did you get started in the idea of I'm a network engineer, yeah. wow, there's some other stuff here I could be doing. Uh, it was very much started organically um, with a significant problem to solve way back in, feels like way back in 2019, January. Uh, I was very fortunate enough uh, being aligned to a very big retail project. They had a, a very tight timeline, very finite budget as always. And ultimately I was told, uh, Ali, you've got to configure 6,000 firewalls and switches. And you've got about three days. Uh, I was like, okay, this is a, a bit of a crazy problem to try and solve. It's not something I'm traditionally used to. But actually uh, by a stroke of luck, uh, it was, February of 2019 where I went to my first Cisco Live in Barcelona and I went to a, a DevNet session uh, that, where there was a presentation about how in America they had used the API to automate the service delivery of 1800 retail stores and that just, I locked into that, brought that idea back to the UK, back to that project and thought right we need to probably look at kind of pausing, taking a step back, our traditional service delivery methods weren't going to cut it as in manually configuring 6,000 uh, devices for, for about 2,500 locations, can we maybe use the API to provision? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the beautiful part of that story was that it was taking me about 90 minutes, maybe a few extra minutes with my OCD, to build these stores manually. But then when we started to look at a bit of a science project internally about how can we use the API, we were able to bring that build time from 90 minutes down to 20 seconds. Uh, and then when you look at the scale of economy and the 2,500 stores, we saved 160 hours, uh, sorry, 160 days uh, overall, uh, and we're able to remove a lot of overhead cost, be able to bring the install from out of hours to in hours. So we were obviously there was a lot of savings there as well. So the, the journey, as I say, started as a traditional 15 years in the field as a CCMP, uh, sort of network engineering catalyst in Meraki, and then really having that fundamental problem that could we solve it and then capture that eureka moment into a bottle and, and obviously productize it to repeat time and time again with other customers. So yeah, very much started in the DevNet space and uh, with a, a big problem to solve. That's fantastic. And I think my favorite part about stories like yours is putting aside all the awesome that is, hey, we solved a complex problem and all these things. Yeah, yeah. I think the great part about this is it I know people are going to watch a video like this and think to themselves, yeah, that's all, that sounds really awesome. 90 yeah, minutes yeah. to 20 seconds, like all these things. But I don't know how to write code. I don't know how to do those things. But so there's all this like prep work I got to do first. I got to learn this and learn that sure, and get people sure. on board. Um, and I think the great part about stories like this is that there is a, ta a tangible outcome that can yep, come from it. Well. So would it, could you talk to us a little bit and maybe help anybody watching this video um, understand a little bit more about what it took to actually go from I'm a network engineer, yep. I saw this session, but yep. there's that time period in there of like, I may not know how to write Python or work with Ansible or pick a tool or a language you're working with. Yep. What was it, what did it take to like, get your brain and teammates' brains into like, okay, we can use this. Here's yeah, how do we, yeah. how, how did you go about that? Yeah, no, no, so it's a, a, a great question because I think ultimately um, we knew that the, the API was fairly in its infancy, so we wanted to test and exercise it. So we, you know, just using Postman, making certain calls, what were the responses we were getting back, and then working very closely with one of my colleagues um, who was uh, who's pretty much uh, an expert in, in C Sharp. We were able to build uh, a HTML application at the time that would effectively execute that particular outcome of, of bringing that build time down and the consistency and quality. So it was, yeah, it was very, uh, again, organically uh, kind of approached, but making sure that actually all of the certain uh, configuration items that we needed to configure for that build of the firewall and the switch were available, and whether or not there was any particular capability that wasn't quite there in the, in at that time, the Meraki dashboard API v0. 
uh, and really through, through testing and exercising, unit tests and so on, we were able to, okay, very quickly, we probably had three weeks, we were able to then come up with a, a very basic application that delivered a, a really solid outcome, both business and technical. So yeah, it was, uh, it was very much using Postman and uh, HTML at the time, yeah. Now it's obviously a little bit more mature, five sure, years yeah. on, but it's a whole practice now. But built. it's cool to know that like, even at a partner, and I shouldn't say even at, but at a partner, mm -hmm. like when you don't, no matter where you work, if you don't know how to do the thing, you use the exactly. tools. And Postman's a really good way to get yeah. your toes kind of in the water of, I'm not sure where to begin, but I want to see what this is going to do. Yeah. I think even beyond that, um, something else you mentioned there is working with a colleague who knew C Sharp, but it could be any language. Yeah. I think that's a touch point there that so many don't realize is that we've been both probably doing this for a long time. I've been, you know, been a network engineer for most of my career since yeah. 2003. Yeah. And I didn't transition to like learning these things until much, much like only yeah, a few yeah, years yeah. ago, really. Yeah, but for the most part, like we any software development, they were kind of the, the developer team yeah. was someplace else. So we, didn't, we didn't interact with them. Yeah. It's I know it's still kind of that way today in a lot of cases, maybe yeah. extreme, maybe not. But your description there was a kind of a really good example, I think, for anyone listening that it is entirely possible if you have person relationships with those yeah, those yeah. folks who do know those things, this is a really good way to build a connection with another team. Yeah, like really and I don't mean like a I don't mean a connection is like, hey, we can talk to each other, but I mean like you can become friends and go, hey, you know, we might be able to do something together here that could help the business that we weren't thinking about. Well, and, and the, the great thing is, Jeff, is really um, the, that ID, I, idea and that kind of uh, light bulb moment in 2019 has built our biggest differentiator as a Cisco partner um, when it comes to actually how do we extract more value from different Cisco platforms, but it's also still very much grassroots based, so we have a lot of great um, Cisco consultants that create Python scripts um, that, that achieve a specific objective, but wouldn't necessarily be something that we could sell uh, or, or resell onto to customers. So what we, we've got a process of kind of fostering this uh, innovate, culture of innovation internally where we can take these great um, Python scripts and capabilities that individuals have built and then productize them into some of the solutions that we've actually developed over the last uh, four years and very much co-funded, co-innovated with, with Cisco in these four spaces that we've um, built platforms around. So yeah, it's, um, but it was still, I think it's what's so vitally important is keeping those connections and the keeping that kind of grassroots organicness that we see across all of our professional services teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, you know what, this is one of those, uh, what, you're, what you're touching on there is one of those things that comes up all the time when I'm talking to any community member of the DevNet Zone, or, or really at any time, okay. and that is, so many people still, I think, feel like these certifications, and I'm going to pick on certifications for just a moment, but I don't really yeah. mean the cert. Sure. The CCIEs of the world, whatever, and I'm really just kind of using that as an analogy for this very senior hardware focused, uh, like administrator, manager, yep. deployer. Um, they think, we tend to think of ourselves as like, oh, we know these things, I don't need to have, I don't know why I would need to know this. Mm -hmm. But I think one of my favorite parts about a conversation like we're having is, it shines a light on the fact that you don't have to become a software developer no. to understand why these tools, these developer tools are so, yeah, are so powerful. It, what it gives you is another way to think about yeah. how to solve problems you didn't think you could. And then when you're talking to a developer, yeah. like a C-sharp developer or whoever it is, mm -hmm. who knows really well how to develop software and use those tools in a way you know, don't know how, then the conversation you can have is like, oh, I didn't realize that we each knew about these different things that we could leverage, and now you can work together to solve a problem in a way that you probably could never have thought of before. Absolutely, and that, that's pretty much my uh, day job, right? My, I live and breathe looking at white space that isn't, for example, focused on by Cisco around maybe automation, around sustainability, around data backup, and these are areas where we've been able to build capability, but it's been, you know, it's not an individual, right? It's a very much, a it takes a village um, to, to build these capabilities. And I think why I'm really fortunate now is that I've kind of built uh, a career in the last five years where I've been given the opportunity to build a very hyper Cisco focused innovation and software development practice and team. So we have our Meraki and Cisco developers, we have our professional services consultants that are out on the field bringing in this kind of lifeblood of next ideas. Um, and then really having a, a new revenue stream actually for, for us as a business, which we never had, right? Four, three years ago, four years ago, we didn't have. But it started with that problem back in January 2019, where we were able to effectively change the way that we delivered a service for a customer. And then pretty much every pro project where there's scale and pace required or where there's uh, ingenuity required, that that's where we're able to take the CA Labs um, innovation practice and, and build it into the project and elevates our Cisco 
value proposition as well as Cisco's technology as well, right? I mean, it yeah. makes, delivers better outcomes and better sentiment for customers. And aside from all of that that you just said, which is amazing, is yeah. my favorite part of a community person is you touched on the fact that you have people out there who are talking to folks and bringing those ideas back to innovate with. Absolutely. I love that because it's a, everything that you work on as a partner and build these, these really cool solutions is fantastic. And then aside from that, the ability to hear from community members like we, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm pointing off camera, no one can see this, but off camera here is where the rest of the DevNet zone is, and I'm watching people walk by. It, all the folks that are here sharing their stories, having these discussions. This is exactly where we learn what is so important to them, yeah. so that, and it's really about, can you, can myself, can others actually listen and go, what are they actually trying to tell us here that we're not doing now, yeah. that we might be able to either build and make available to them in whatever way to solve their problems later on? It's something I, um, I uh, instigate on, on the sort of a lot of my uh, sessions internally is that every part of the business, yeah, it has a contribution. Um, every idea is valid until you know we obviously look at um, whiteboarding it and understanding it a bit better. So our sales teams, our pre-sales teams, our professional services, and all the guys on the managed services and not all have great ideas that come into the CA Labs practice. And it's about okay, are these uh, repeatable problems that we're looking to solve? Are these uh, you know top of mind problems for leadership that we work with? So yeah, ev everybody absolutely has their valued measure and metric in, in bringing those ideas. And I would I would that's part of why something that was maybe a few years ago on the fringe um, of of uh, us as a partner very much now at the core of both our technical services and our business and services side as well. So it's kind of woven into the fabric of the DNA, so to speak, but, uh, which I love. I mean, it's kind of, it blows my mind that yeah. I'm here uh, like four years on, four or five years on since that project and we're actually got a, a practice that's, that's so cool. solving solving real problems. I love it, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here, I really appreciate yeah, it. No Hope worries. others watching this video can like, like find themselves uh, hearing parts of your journey that resonate with their journey. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the time in the DevNet Zone. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Ali. Thank you.